what's going on guys another an instant reaction here from the connor and mark show make sure you click that subscribe button for our youtube page uh we were not expecting to do an instant reaction tonight but we just got done watching the big philadelphia 76ers game against the utah jazz a huge overtime win uh for the 76ers a dominant performance from joel Embiid, uh looking like the front runner for the mvp a huge performance from him and tobias harris in overtime as well and uh, a little bit of rage quit from Donovan Mitchell as he was thrown out at the end of the game, but it was most certainly the most exciting game for the Philadelphia 76ers this season. Mark, uh, how about this game, man? I, I didn't think we'll be on here doing an instant reaction, but we just had to do it after watching that one. Yeah, dude, definitely. I mean, I was in, I didn't start watching the game till the fourth quarter and, and um, you know, we started, started digging in. You texted me, we got to do one. And, and the overtime was just super exciting. And, and like you said, um, you know, Embiid was the storybook of this game, um, 40 and 10, another huge performance out of him and, and an MVP like, um, and he just looked great, man. The whole team looked good. And, uh, there's just a different, different compete to this team this year. It looks a lot different under doc rivers and everyone's buying in. So great win, um, super exciting game. And, and like you mentioned, Donovan Mitchell, um, Pretty, pretty selfish play, you know, um, getting thrown out there, two technicals. But, you know, it, the Sixers really kept their heads and, and got a big win here. No, a huge win. And listen, Joel Embiid's been the front runner for the MVP for, for uh, really the whole season, along with LeBron James. But 40 points, 19 rebounds from Joel in 40 minutes of play. And and Tobias Harris, who finished with 22 points, but he was dominant in the OT uh, period and, and really led the, the 76ers to the win. Uh, I believe he had maybe eight points in the overtime period. He was really unstoppable. And Ben Simmons, who finished with 17, 4, and 7, was was great defensively once again. Obviously, he's looked as one of the best defenders in the NBA at this point. It's really just remarkable to see the 76ers team start to come together. That was a final game before they head into the All-Star break. And we, we were asking ourselves, I know we recorded a podcast tonight with um, – with Kevin from Barstool, who runs Philly, uh, Philly Barstool, we'll have that out hopefully by tomorrow. But um, just and we were talking about the 76ers and where they are, and and we thought you know we talked about the NBA trade trade deadline it's going to happen at the end of the month. But right now, this, the 76ers roster as it's currently constructed is pretty good. Yeah, I mean they like you said, every you know everyone's looking pretty good. I mean Seth Curry had had a pretty good game, I thought, and he did. And um, Jake you know, I play well. Jake Milne played really well. You know, at the end there, he you know, got shaken up a little bit, but. Yeah. Again, this whole team, just like you said, I, you know, we were getting to the deadline. And, and I know, like you said, we released a podcast with Kyle and we asked him about, you know, adding an extra piece. And again, he said that, you know, they may have to. But this team really proved again tonight that they may not need that extra piece and uh, a huge win again against I think the NBA's best team right now in the Jets. No, I agree. And listen, the, the 76 are going in first in the Eastern Conference into the All-Star break. And there's a lot to be excited about. But I listen. This tonight's performance will will stick to this. It, it was just awesome to watch them, and this is I know the Jazz are number one in in the West, and you know the Suns are up there that they've played really well, but obviously the Jazz are by far three and a half games above uh, the, the Phoenix Suns for the number one spot. They're a very good team. They're very hot, and obviously the 76ers played them tough in Utah without Joel Embiid, but tonight to see them uh, get out a big win, a big three, the buzzer and the regulation for Joel Embiid to tie it. It was a, a fun, exciting game, but. You know, it's just uh, it was just great to watch that game. And and I'll bring up this topic, you know, Joel Embiid in the MVP conversation. I don't see how he's not the MVP at this point. He really is. And I know LeBron's getting, uh, you know, he's been doing great with the Lakers. I believe they're number th- three in the Western Conference. They haven't had Anthony Davis for a pretty good chunk of the season. But it, Joel is just playing at an all-time high, and he's so important and vital to this team. And there's a reason why they're number one, because it's, it's him. And it, there's no big men in the league that really can stop him let alone slow him down. And um, it's, it's just it really, he's my, he's my MVP. I know I have bias. I know we have bias for a photo of his sports podcast here, but it's, he has to be the front runner. I just can't see any other guy right now as we currently going into the all-star break that is ahead of him. Yeah. I mean, like you said, I, he's, he is the front runner. I mean, I, the only other guy I think could be challenging him right now is Damian Lillard, just because, you know, McCollum yeah. and, and Nurkic haven't gotten a lot of time out there because they're injured, but you know, he's putting up massive points games. And, and not only that, he's putting up rebounds as well. Um, you know, getting busy on the boards there. So he's a vital part to this team. Um, and, and no, and listen, teams aren't going to shoot that, you know, clip usually. So the fact that the Sixers were able to get a win with a team like that shooting uh, that well from three and be able to put up a fight in Utah against them when they were putting up that many threes as well is just impressive. Like, 
um, you know, defensively down the down the stretch is what really matters. And I think that we saw, um, you know, we saw Ben in overtime lock down Donovan Mitchell. You could tell he got frustrated, obviously getting thrown out. And we'll, we'll touch on that before we end this instant reaction. But this defensively in the stretch period, when you got have guys who can lock down defensively, obviously like Joel and Ben, uh, guys like you know Shake Milton's a pretty good defender. Tobias Harris is a good defender. Just guys who are big and 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 have a long wingspan can really defend. And down the stretch, that's what really matters, uh, especially in the playoffs. But I, I do want to get to the Donovan Mitchell thing. Listen, he he threw a temper tantrum. He was not happy with uh, with the. The, the call that was on Joel Embiid in overtime, I think the mm-hmm. foul was on Rudy Gobert. He got a technical foul there. Um, but listen, he got a foul call in the beginning of the overtime. It was on the three-point call. It was on the three-point in the corner. He leaned into the shot, and they gave him the foul shot, or they gave him three foul shots, and it wasn't even a foul at all. So, like, listen, I, I understand if you're pissed about a call, but you're really going to go through a whole temper tantrum about, you know, uh, the call on Joel Embiid when he got three foul shots earlier. I don't, I don't get it. And obviously I know people get heated and the, the moment gets the best of them, but it, when you're that close in an overtime game, against a, a big game like that. You can't be doing that to your team. <clears throat> yeah. And no, I, I totally agree. He, you know, he got very upset about the first one and you know, that it's tough to take a technical in overtime for sure, but then to go over the line and, and take a second one when you're probably next to Joe Ingles, probably the best shooter on the team. Um, and a guy that they rely on and in times like that, you know, it's, you can't do that. And, and it was pretty funny to watch. I thought, uh, I, was, it was, I, thought I, the, thought was I thought the other funny part was after the first one and he was yelling at the ref, Joel was, uh, throwing up the technical yeah. sign. So it was funny. He did it. And, and then the ref threw, uh, you know, Mitchell a technical. So, but, um, you know, all in all great win for the Sixers. They got to keep this momentum, obviously when they return from the all-star break and, and I don't see why they can't finish number one in the East if they keep playing this way. No, I don't see it. I mean, they're on this current trend, and <clears throat> I know I'm very fond of the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, they have a lot of talent, but as of right now, the ending, entering into the uh, the All-Star break, they're, I believe, a game above the Brooklyn Nets uh, with the Milwaukee Bucks uh, on the third spot and a big drop-off after that with number four Boston Celtics finally getting some wins and find themselves back in the fourth seed. Uh, but listen, uh, make sure you stay, you know, uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Uh, and Instagram as well. That's where we keep uh, updated on all our content. And there's going to be a podcast hopefully drop by tomorrow as well. But uh, listen, thank you for listening on Instant Reaction and we'll see you guys soon.